What he done was an act of treason in my book because he lied to Parliament. He manufactured the lies to send us to an illegal war. He knew it was an illegal war. There was no justification to go into Iraq whatsoever. And, uh, and it, the man should be prosecuted. I'll ask Sir Roderick to pick up the questions now, Rod. But my question was, what did you say to right, President, so when, President Bush? I'm, I'm leading up to that. When then you get to, to the evidence, when you then get to my conversation with the President Bush, I am in a situation then where I'm saying to him, look, we're going to have to deal with this issue. We accept that. After September the 11th, the calculus of risk has changed and changed fundamentally. We cannot allow Saddam to be in breach of um, UN resolutions. So I'm signaling that I'm up for the policy of handling and dealing with this issue. And we're going to be with America in doing that. When you say that um, you discussed with the president how to deal with it, um, what sort of ideas were you discussing with him? Were, were you discussing with him, was this the beginnings of a discussion about regime change? Well, regime change was their policy, so regime change is always part of the discussion. And was it your policy? Um, no, it wasn't our policy to have regime change, but it was our policy to deal with the WMD issue. Just to Comment. say, Mr Blair, that we have checked or rechecked the cabinet records, but you have said in your statement that 1441 achieved our objectives. Now, how could it have achieved our objectives if your Attorney General, your, your senior legal officer, was telling you that it hadn't? Well, this is the very point that I'm making, that what was happening was, and this is why, frankly, with retrospect, it would have been better if he'd been closely and uh, very closely involved with this negotiation, because what was happening was we had agreed on the 17th of October that there were there were clear objectors for the resolution, and those objectives were, and I think we actually say this uh, very plainly, he had the, the ultimatum goes into 1441. If he breaches the ultimatum, action follows. You, uh, referred earlier to, uh... As Stephen Patterson's evidence to you makes clear, there were changes that the Americans put in in the, in the final evolving stages of this negotiation, and the thing that was problematic for me throughout, and it's why uh, you know, I, I wrote on a later note from Peter, I just don't understand this, is that the whole point about our instructions to our negotiators were make sure that this resolution is sufficient because we can't guarantee we're going to go back into a, a, a further iteration of this or a second resolution. So, and my view you know, look, this is, uh, we can go through all this uh, again, but my view was that the important thing about 1441 is that it said this is your final opportunity, and what's more, it specified what constituted a breach, namely a failure fully, unconditionally, immediately to comply with the UN inspectors. So we believed that out of this, we got a resolution that was valid, but of course that became a continuing debate with Peter then over the next two or three months. It's just following through this.